We've got to move on. Uh, the Bulldogs, uh, the clean out. I don't know if I'm uh, the brave. McDougals. The McDougals. The McDougals. Yeah. McDougals. I don't know if I'm brave to say that. I hope uh, Gus Gould, their GM, isn't uh, close by. But a, a host of their players, Kyle Flanagan, Luke Thompson, uh, Ryan Sutton, among others, have been told that they mm. can go. Do you have to let players go in a bid to land a big The choice? thing I've been hearing about um, the Bulldogs uh, publicly and on the quiet is the standards at training. The Bulldogs were renowned in the uh, late 90s, mid 90s, late 90s, early 2000s as a club that flogged their players mm. and to the point of breaking them. And if they did break you, you weren't a Bulldog. And that was under Billy Johnson and uh, Gary Carr. Car Tony Grimaldi was at the end. Tony the, but it was Billy Johnson. Mate, they'd flog them. And if you weren't up to it, you weren't a Bulldog. they got to get back to that. So whether these players aren't up to that DNA, but... They've got to get those standards back of the Bulldogs. They've got to get that Bulldogs DNA. So if you're not, if you're not happy with the training, you just bring in someone that is. A, a problem now is some players are too well educated on sports science. And you know, they, they talk about loading and how much they've done and they need the, this and that. Gone are the days where... I remember you did what you were told. You did what you were told. And did, did that come from the coach or did it come from a senior player? Because you spoke Both. before. You said you were Get out uh, on not the field pleasant to try. be around. I remember one. So Ronnie Palmer. Actually, the players come to me and said, mate, we're getting flogged. We're, we're breaking down. Roosters used to get flogged. Yeah, Roosters, early 2000s. We used to train hard. So this is, ju this is just before. Because remember David Barnhill. He was one of the players that came to me. So anyway, they said, mate, we're breaking. And I rang Ronnie Palmer and I said, oh, Ron, uh, look, mate, players have just spoken to me. Uh, you know, this is the way they're feeling. You know, it's up to you. You do what you do. So anyway, I'm sitting on the lounge and I get this phone call. Who the f do you think you f are? Ricky. <laughs> Gus. Gus. <laughs> when you want to coach, you f f f <laughs> for about five-minute tirade. I Don't never shoot said the a, messenger. I never said a word. <laughs> just hung up. We're not going to rest. I remember reading a story of Kelvin Giles, the he great conditioner, me. who was a conditioner at Canberra when they, when they were in that early, late 80s, early 90s. Then he went to Brisbane when they went 92, 93. Yeah. And he said, he used to, f he said, this was the era before professionalism where a lot of the players were working manual labour, the labourers or, you know, garbos. So they get them in the morning, they'd flog them in the gym or flog them on the field, they'd go to work, they'd come back at night and they'd flog them again. No complaining. Mm. Nowadays, all, some of the players are too well educated and they use that as an excuse. I was really surprised when I went, went to Clubland and they fill out a bit of form. And it's like, how'd you sleep last night? But how much hydration you had? <laughs> how's your well-being? Dang, how's the body feel? They fill it. And there's a number. Da there's up, daily forms. Yep. Yeah, they come with a number. Club. And if it doesn't meet the number, they don't train or they send them home. Mate, I would never have trained. <laughs> How much sleep Are you, you got? sober? <laughs> Are you sober? <laughs> Are you sober? <laughs> Freddie, do you think you, you spoke about Gus then giving you a spray? Do you think Gus is could you do that? Still now? have that these days, or you can't? Could do you it? do that? Well, you could do it. Certain players. if a player went out of line, and you know certain coaches, you've got to be able to do it. The coach is in charge. If you let the players in charge, you're in all sorts. Mm. So would Gus be doing that, or Cam Serrato? I, I think know, Gus Cam Serrato. Cam Serrato be sitting with Gus, and they'd be communicating like they're. You know, they're, they're on the same level. They're communicating and they're trying to get this club and turn around into a, a winning club and a winning culture. So sometimes you've got to make big decisions. And if they're picking players, and you've got to remember too that, you know, these players, because they're at Canterbury or coming nearly last, they'd be going to the club saying, well, I want this much and be getting offering less at other places. Mm. So it's the opposite of a Jerome Luo situation. So... Um, you know, Jake Avarillo, big off from the Dolphins. They're going to sit there and go, wait up. So is he worth this? Like, at the moment, they're playing... They're not just trying to win games, but they need to sort of get their salary cap in order. We're seeing tries being scored there and not a fingertip <laughs> laid on a player. It's like, like the 80s. That is, that is just terrible. Terrible. The, uh, there was an interesting scene on Monday when Liam Knight was at South Sydney headquarters and uh, Danny Widler had the story. He got the, he got the shot of him here leaving Souths. At nine o'clock on Monday morning, he's hailing, I think it was his manager, 
in the Land Rover and then we had a camera at the other end waiting for him at the dogs. Dog America. And there's Gus opening <laughs> the door for him in Bulldogs colours and Danny walking by. But in terms of that signing, is that moving forward? A player like Liam Knight, he's had his injury troubles. Well, Liam trains really hard. Well, he's, his he's, injuries are the... Yeah. He's come, coming off a horrendous knee. Mm. You know, that guy dived at his knee from behind. But uh, uh, he's had some dramas um, in his life, Liam, but I, I know for a fact that he's, he's really dedicated to it now and he's on top of a lot of those things. I think he'd be a good influence there, especially on the younger players. Trains hard. He's got his life sorted. He's a very likeable bloke who trains hard. You talk about the, the dog's DNA. Mm. They're renowned for that. They're all likeable blokes who like a good time, but they always trained hard. I remember seeing him when he's coming through at Manly. He's only a baby then. Mm. 18, 19, he would lead everything. Yeah, he used to, like, he was all in, all the, he was in all the pathways teams, always in the New South Wales teams. He was the best, the best front row or back row coming through. It's a good boy. It's a good he's, opportunity for him too. And he's there next year as well, so it's a mm. good lead in to go, hey, get mm. part of the system. Can he play? He's, yeah. He play? Yeah, he's playing this week in... Is Cup. he? Has he been playing for South? He, he's had a couple of setbacks exactly. after his knee. Yeah, right. Yeah.